last video um, of Poisson process, uh, we'll learn a new definition of Poisson process, but this is actually the original definition presented in the textbook on uh, Poisson process. Uh, but now um, uh, let's learn it. First, I want to recall the original um, Poisson process definition, the original one. Which we present in our lectures, that is, uh, given the counting process, okay, up to time t, the number of uh, events right here is of Poisson uh, distribution with the rate lambda times the length of this time, and then uh, we have uh, stationary. and um, independent uh, increment. To think about this, uh, I, I don't know if you guys feel about it, but uh, this assumption right here, the number of events is a Poisson distribution with rate lambda times t. At the first glance, it seems pretty artificial. And in the alternative definition will learn the most natural way to define a uh, Poisson process. Okay. Um, still, uh, we have to first uh, require our process of interest is a counting process. Okay. Uh, that is, uh, um, its time variable is a continuous uh, variable. Okay, so its variable is a continuous variable, but itself. Uh, it's a counting, uh, which is a uh, discrete. And the first requirement is, of course, when we start our clock, uh, no events have happened. Um, of course, the second one is uh, um, this NT has uh, independent increment. And you can you can add a stationary increment, but we'll use an alternate definition. Number three is the probability of n t subtract n t plus h subtract n t is one. Okay, and think about this h is a small time, like that. and this right here uh, is. A small time interval from uh, this is like uh, t and this is like t plus h and this is very small. The probability of some event happens during this time is proportional to uh, this length h. All right. And then plus some higher order term, this little o of h, and I'll explain this on notation in a bit. And last one is on this uh, small time interval, the probability of um, some event happen here. That's a greater than or equal to two is a higher order term of this h, and I want to mention about this. This is nothing but saying the probability of one event happening during this time interval is proportion proportional to the length of this time interval, and we can actually ignore these terms. And to make a comparison. First, we want to make a comparison that is uh, by the original definition. Okay, and what happens is uh, the number of the expected value of this one, uh, which is. Uh, the expected value of number of events happened during this time 
his land bridge. But right now, we're actually, uh, and this probability being this lambda h is much stronger than the expectation being of lambda h. And now if we have uh, these four, uh, this uh, stochastic process is a Poisson process. Okay. Um, and now let's, uh, notation-wise, let's explain what is uh, this little o of h means. Um, so this little o of h means higher order uh, than uh, h. And h is some small things. It simply means the following. When h goes to 0, little o of h divided by h is 0. So for example, we can say h squared is uh, little o of h is because when h goes to 0, um, h squared divided by h uh, is 0. And next, uh, let's still have this inter-arrival time, and this is our t1, which is our the time of the first event. Um, okay, and we want to show that uh, this is uh, lemma 5.2 on textbook. We want to show that uh, T1 is an exponential distributed uh, random variable with uh, rate, let me capitalize this, is an exponential distributed random variable with rate lambda. Okay. Um, if um, time of the first event of, uh, let's say, n of t, if n of t is satisfied, condition 1 to 4. And let's first consider um, so we consider and let, let's uh, show it. Let's consider first uh, P of uh, this N of T is 0. Okay. This is uh, um, nothing happens um, like before time T but we do know that uh, there is, uh, and we are curious if uh, this is the time of the first event happening. So, and based on this one, first let's consider um, and we try to exploit uh, this increment condition. Let's try to consider this. And use the trick of uh, in previous video. Oops. This probability right here. This is t plus h. This is t. If uh, if no event happens during this time interval, and no event happen during this time interval, it means no event happened during this time interval. So um, this one being zero is the same as probability um, of n of t is zero. It means no event happens during this time. Meanwhile, no event happened from t to t plus h, all right? Then here we can use independent increment condition. This is probability of n of t is zero times probability of uh, 
n alpha q plus h subtract n is 0. Okay. Um, and what's interesting is this one can actually be computed by uh, part 3 and 4. And let's look back. Okay. And part 3 and 4 actually implies, because we, we are curious of 1 and 2 here, then the probability of this guy being 0 is just 1 subtract this. And essentially, it's 1 subtract lambda h, because uh, these two are how order terms when h is uh, small. Okay, now scroll down. So by uh, 3, condition 3 and 4, we have this is nothing but uh, probability of n of p is 0. Um, times 1 minus uh, lambda h. And we can actually discard uh, this term right here. So we'll throw this away. Okay. And now uh, something interesting will happen. We can rewrite this as a difference equation form. So now if we look uh, at uh, um, this term and this term right here, this becomes, this is n um, of p plus h is 0, subtract, probability of n of p is 0, is equal to minus uh, lambda h times probability of n of p is 0. And if, okay, if we denote this probability of n of p is 0 as a function of time, which we denoted by p of uh, 0 of t, then this becomes A almost like a differential equation. All right, and now we divide h on both sides, okay, and then we let h go to zero. We'll see that uh, the the left is nothing but uh, uh, the derivative which is uh, the derivative of p0 of t, and the right, uh, h got cancelled, so we have actually lambda times minus lambda times p0 of t. This is nothing but od101, uh, we divide p0 of t to the left, then the left can be rewritten as natural log of uh, uh, p0 of t prime is equals minus lambda. And apparently now uh, p0 of t is an exponential function, um, which is uh, c times e to the minus lambda t. Okay. Um, how do we figure it out um, this constant c is we simply make use of a one um, straightforward observation. That is, what is this guy? Okay. And this is actually using the definition of, uh, of this p0 of t. This is... Uh, probability of n0 is 0. And this we simply use a condition number 1 because n of 0 is 0 is 1. Okay. And then this implies when we plug in that, capital C is nothing but 1. 
as a result, this becomes probability of NT equals zero equals e to the minus lambda t power. Then we will use the interpretation of uh, um, this n of t. n of t being zero, it means zero event during zero to t. It also means something very uh, interesting is if we have a zero event from zero to t, it simply means our t1, the arrival time of the first event is greater than t. As a result, this guy, this probability is nothing but uh, this t1 is greater than t, and this is e to the minus lambda t, so this implies probability of t1 less than or equal to t is 1 minus this guy, and if we take derivative, this implies um, the density function of t1 is we just take derivative and we'll get uh, this one. And this is for t greater than zero, by the way, because we are not interested in uh, when t is less than zero. Uh, the reason is when we start our clock right here. Okay. And now we've reached our conclusion. This is exactly uh, t1 is of exponential distribution with rate lambda. So now we've shown that the first arrival time, which is t1, is of exponential distribution uh, with the rate of lambda, then by independent increment, t2 is apparently exponential distribution of lambda as well, and then uh, t3, which is inter-arrival time between the second and the third even its exponential uh, distribution of rate lambda as well. So by uh, independent uh, increment and stationary increment, Actually, stationary increment can be uh, deduced uh, by these conditions, but I'll skip that. Uh, this implies t1, t2, t3, uh, they are uh, independent, identically distributed. exponential distribution with lambda. And this is exactly um, the distribution of inter-arrival time of lambda. So this actually implies n of t is a Poisson process and satisfy all of these uh, conditions. The Poisson process should satisfy. Recap uh, this very interesting last definition. Uh, I mean, the, the key is uh, given a small time interval. This is from uh, t to t plus h. The probability of uh, the event happened during this time frame, being 1 uh, is essentially proportional to the length of this time interval. And this is the key, this uh, proportion.
conversely, we can verify that it's uh, uh, very natural uh, to have this uh, this kind of a linear proportion relation. It's because uh, for Poisson distribution, we know that um, it equals n. This equals e to the minus lambda t to the power uh, divided by n factorial, then lambda t uh, raised to the n to the power. And now um, let's try to um, uh, let me use h right here. Okay. So because of the stationary increment, uh, it's actually the same as above, but uh, distribution-wise. Okay. When n is one. This is e to the minus lambda h times lambda h. Okay. And by Taylor expansion, what we have, uh, by the way, uh, e to the x is nothing but uh, 1 plus uh, x divided by 1 plus x divided by 2. Uh, x cubed divided by 3 factorial, etc. And uh, um, as a result, when h is small, this is nothing but 1 minus lambda h, then we plus higher order term of h, this times lambda h. Okay? And now if we simplify, this is nothing but lambda h subtract lambda square h square, and now this becomes a higher order term of h as well. So we can combine, and all these terms are all higher order term of h because when divided by h, it goes to zero as h goes to zero. So this equals lambda of h plus higher order term of h. As we can see, uh, the Poisson distribution right here um, satisfy this condition as well is uh, when the time is uh, very small, then the probability is linear proportional to the interval length.